Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white Super Friends Planeswalker deck, and this might be a bit of a dying breed in Standard going forward, as new expansions only introduce a single Planeswalker, so we're less likely to have that critical mass of Planeswalkers to build a deck around. That being said, for now we still have quite a few in Standard, since rotation hasn't happened yet, so we can uh, try out our Urza Assembles of the Titans once again. Another reason why I wanted to revisit this archetype is because Ashiok won the poll on Patreon not too long ago, I built a red-black mid-range deck, but I feel like I didn't really do Ashok enough justice, so that's what I'm gonna try to address today by having even more synergy with Ashok than before, and hopefully we can even pull off the minus 7 ultimate to mill the opponent out if we have enough cards in exile, and Ashok has an interesting passive ability, saying if we would pay life while we have enough cards in library, we will exile that many cards instead of paying the life. So Ashok works very nicely alongside Staff of Completion, this 3-man artifact has 4 different modes, probably won't be using the first one, but we can tap it, pay 2 life and add 1 mana of any color, so it turns it into a nice ramp artifact to potentially cast our Urza Assembles or Ashiok on turn 4 already. Then we can also pay 3 life and proliferate, which is quite nice alongside all our Planeswalkers, as we get to add an extra loyalty counter to each one of them, but we can also add an extra plus 1 counter to our tokens if we had a Wandering Emperor in play, or potentially even add an extra lore counter to Urza Assembles the Titans, which is where things can get pretty ridiculous. And then Staff can also pay 4 life to draw a card, so Staff with Ashok in play turns into an awesome card draw engine essentially, or way to proliferate for free while exiling cards from our library, which will then set up the minus 7 ultimate, saying target player exiles the top X cards of their library, where X is the total mana value of cards we own in exile. So the more we essentially draw with our staff of completion, the more likely the minus 7 turns into a lethal mill effect. Then Ashok can also draw extra cards with the plus 1, exiling something in the process, and the minus 2 can make a pair of nightmare tokens, which can also grow over time time as we exile more and more cards. And then we also have four copies of Urza Assembles the Titans. This Read Ahead Saga can start from any point. On chapter one we scry four and then reveal the top card of our library. If it's a Planeswalker we can put it into our hand. And with 13 Planeswalkers total we've got a pretty good chance of finding one. And even if we didn't find a Planeswalker at least we got to scry four so we're more likely to have an exciting draw step. Then on chapter two we can put a Planeswalker card with mana value six or less from our hand onto the battlefield. And if we zoom out the only exception is Kaya at seven mana. Everything else we can to put in play for free. And then a chapter 3 it lets us activate our planeswalkers twice this turn instead of just once. So that also makes it much easier to potentially ultimate an Ashok, even at the same turn we played it. So let's say we have Urza Assembles going off, we could now activate our Ashiok using the plus one ability. Then if we have a proliferate effect like Staff of Completion, we can add an extra loyalty counter to our planeswalker. And then since we get to activate it twice, now we also get to use the minus seven to potentially instantly win the game. Of course, that does require enough cards in exile, but that's where having multiple Staffs of Completion can come in handy. And we could, of course, also have multiple multiple Ashioks going in case our opponent answered the first one. And Ashok also works quite nicely with adventures, like the Virtue of Persistence. If we use the 2-mana Sorcery as removal, gaining 2 life in the process, now we'll have a 7-mana Enchantment in Exile, which also contributes towards Ashok's minus 7 ultimate ability, so that's an extra expensive card that can make it easier to mill out the opponent. Also, if we happen to exile it with a plus 1 ability, now we'll have a 7-mana card in Exile, so that's also very helpful. And then, of course, we need a few more Planeswalkers to make this deck function. At 3 mana, 1 Liliana of the Veil, which can make the opponent sack a creature or make each player discard a card. At 4 mana, 2 copies of the Wandering Emperor, which can also help interact with the opponent's creatures using the minus 2 or make additional Samurai tokens. And then, as we mentioned, the plus 1 plus 1 counters can also synergize with Proliferate. We've got Sorin the Mirthless, which can be a card draw engine with the plus one, maybe make life-linking vampires, and if we ever get to ultimate, that can also win the game by dealing 13 damage and gaining 13 life. And then at 5 mana we've got the full set of Ashok alongside Urza Assembles. And then at 6 mana, of course it's nice to have an expensive Planeswalker to cheat into play with the second chapter. So we've got 2 copies of the Eternal Wanderer, which can also control the board using the minus 4, make additional 2-2 double striking Samurai, and the plus 1 can also occasionally come in handy. And then a two copies of a Vraska Betrayal's Sting. 
and this also has excellent synergy with our Urza assembles the Titans if we put it in play with Chapter 2. Now we get to use the zero ability to draw a card, lose one life, and proliferate, maybe even after having cast another Planeswalker in the same turn, which can also pick up an extra loyalty. Plus, we also get to add an extra lore counter to Urza assembles the Titans to immediately activate our Planeswalkers twice, including the one we just played, and including Vraska, which can also let us proliferate once again. So that's how we can very quickly build up loyalty on our various Planeswalkers and eventually set up the minus 7 on Ashok to win the game by milling the opponent out. We could also poison the opponent to death using Vraska's minus 9 ability, applying 9 poison counters, and then we just need to proliferate once again either with our Staff of Completion or with or drown an acre and then we can also win the game with poison so we've got three different win conditions between poison mill and of course damage if we just make a few creature tokens with our eternal wanderer that's not too difficult and then we also have one kaya which can also be very fun if we get to activate it twice with urza assembles going off we can plus two to drain for three so we'll gain three and the opponent loses three life can be very effective against those red burn decks the zero ability lets us draw two even though the opponent gets to scry one and then the minus three can exile a creature or enchantment and then make a copy of it in the form of a 1-1 flying spirit token so it can be especially powerful if we exile a creature with a powerful ETB effect thinking of a Traxa or a Tali it can be very effective if we exile it with Kaya and then we also need some early interaction to stay alive against the aggressive decks so two copies of cut down we mentioned drown and Icar as another way to proliferate but can also be used as removal of course and then we've got some mana acceleration with Iron Crag at 2 mana. It is legendary, but we can potentially discard the second copy to a Liliana plus. Then we also have our two copies of Virtue. And then at 3 mana, couple sweepers with Path of Peril, destroying all creatures with mana value 2 or less. But we can also cleave it for 6 mana, in which case we'll just destroy all creatures. So it can be a nice board wipe. And then a Staff of Completion alongside the Celestis at 3 mana. Give us access to a turn 4 Urza Assembles or Ashiok, which can then hopefully take over the game. And then a mana base also got a nice upgrade with Wilds of Eldraine, introducing our Restless Fortress, which can turn into a 1-4 creature that when it attacks makes the opponent lose 2 life and we gain 2 life. So even if the opponent blocks it, we can still guarantee a bit of life gain and drain. And then we've got a few more dual lines for mana fixing. And then Abandoned Mire especially can be nice at getting back a Planeswalker if we channel it. Iganjo gives us a bit more interaction. So 25 lands total since we have a relatively high curve, despite having 8 ramp artifacts which can also produce more mana. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand looks good. We've got our early interaction. Celestis to hopefully play turn 4 Urza Assembles or even Ashiok. If we hold this until after we play Ashiok or Urza Assembles, the Proliferate can also synergize quite well. Up against another black-white deck. Okay, so if they're just holding a bunch of creature removal, we're happy. And they actually made a knight at instant speed with Virtue of Loyalty. Okay, that can pressure our Planeswalkers pretty well. Serpo and black white tokens. Not exactly what we were hoping to see. We'll need to try and find one of our sweepers. A revelry to just draw a card, that's not too bad. And draw, instead of making an extra token, found a land, that's perfect. So Urza assembles the Titans. Do we start from chapter one or chapter two is a question. I think we played slow, hoping they don't have enchantment removal here. Then next turn I can put in a free Vraska and cast Ashiok. And then if we get to chapter 3 it could be pretty awesome. Because Vraska also proliferates to chapter 3. And Wandering Emperor on top. And then I don't mind drawing an extra land afterwards. Staff of Completion we already have. Okay, so if they don't destroy my saga, we're in business. Ah, opponent's got a stroke of midnight. Okay, at least we get a 1-1 in return. And then I should probably trade off now before it picks up plus one plus one. This could have been an awesome turn. But we still have six mana. I can play any of my planeswalkers. Could also drown the knights. Although this will be better once we have more Planeswalkers on the battlefield. This has Vigilance, so Emperor not the best answer. 
Could also go Staff of Completion, still play Wandering Emperor in the opponent's end step just to make a Samurai and then untap with more mana to uh, deploy Ashiok and maybe drown in the same turn, which could work out pretty well. Because then I can grow the Nightmare tokens before proliferating. And our opponent knows about Emperor, but that's fine. Didn't really want to turn this into a treasure with Vraska when they were struggling to hit their land drops. So we'll take three. Opponent passes with mana untapped, could be their own Wandering Emperor. Make a Samurai. And now we also protect our other Planeswalkers from a Shieldred's Edict. Discard Celestus. Eternal Wanderer can also take out opposing tokens turn after turn. So we have some great options available. Wouldn't mind getting Ashiok down. Then let's say we make the tokens. I can use Staff to draw which would then grow the tokens. And of course draw a card as well, and then we can still drown an Icar afterwards. So we'll start here. Make tokens. Can plus on the Samurai here, see if they have a response. And then I'll draw a card. Exiling a few cards in the process, so that will grow our tokens. Can attack. Or we can just go to second main phase, because if our opponent does have Emperor, they could make this a 4 4 first strike. And then now second main and drown the token, proliferating on everything. Awesome. That was a good turn. We've got our Staff plus Ashiok combo. Two more Planeswalkers in hand. So I like where this is going. If we find an Urza Assembles at some point, that will be awesome too. And our opponent didn't do anything with four mana. Sunfall makes sense. But uh, yeah, we can flicker the token with Eternal Wonder, so we don't have to worry about it. Sequencing-wise, I could start by plussing Ashiok. If I proliferate with Vraska and Staff, I still won't be able to ultimate this turn. So I can start here. And I would like Urza Assemble, so Exile Cave. Okay, this is going to be great. So I want to Urza Assembles. Put in Vraska starting from chapter 2. And then Vraska proliferates. Can make a token here. And yeah, let's plus Vraska. Proliferate on our saga, and so no opponent concedes already. So by proliferating onto our saga, what happens next is we get to essentially activate all our Planeswalkers a second time. We would proliferate Ashok up to 6 loyalty, then we still haven't activated Staff, so that's another proliferate. So that gets Ashok to 7, we can activate it a second time thanks to our Saga. So I could technically ultimate Ashok already, but uh, depending on how many expensive cards we exalt, that may or may not be game over. Otherwise we can just play the value game here and draw a few more cards. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keeper. Lots of early interaction, Iron Crank to ramp out Urza Assembles. And now a Wanderer we can maybe put in play with Chapter 2. Misery Shadow meets Cut Down. And now we've got our Staff as well, in case we find Ashok, that's going to be great. But also just another ramp card for Urza Assembles if we don't hit our land drop. 
Fast passer is okay. Probably not going to be paying for life to draw here. Hope to draw lands in case her opponent plays Shieldred so we can cleave Path of Peril. If not, Urza Assembles will have to do. Opponent does nothing. Switches to Knight. Alright, let's assemble the Titans and then I don't mind starting from Chapter 1 to try and get more value. Could also proliferate and get this to Chapter 2 right away. And I'll keep an Ashiok on top. Do I want to draw a land afterwards? Um, probably an untapped land, I wouldn't mind. Sure. Reveal. And then if I proliferate, I can put Eternal Wonder on the battlefield, make a token. The only problem is it could end up dying if our opponent kills a token, animates Mishra's Foundry next turn. So proliferating, putting in play Ashiok to make two tokens would be a little bit safer against removal. But we'll have to fight through removal at some point. Yeah, close call. Could also just pass and then next turn cast a Planeswalker and put another one in play for free. And then maybe proliferate afterwards. I don't think we're in a hurry. If our opponent was tapped out, it would be a different story. Okay, so put in Eternal Wanderer, and then I want to activate it before doing anything else in case of an Edict, and uh, making a Samurai makes sense. And then we can play Ashiok. Opponent's gonna cut down our token in response, that happens. Ashiok probably wants to make a couple tokens here to play defense. And then instead of proliferating the Saga, which I could do here to make more tokens, I think we just activate this to draw. Using Ashok's passive, we exile cards instead of paying life, and that will grow the Nightmares. So at least one of them can maybe trade for a Mishra's Foundry. And Drowned and Acre is going to be excellent as well. So yeah, we're slowly pulling ahead here. And the more Planeswalkers we have next turn, the better. Opponent kills another token. Just hoping to keep as many Planeswalkers alive as possible. Opponent fires up Foundry. Two damage is fine. So I'll definitely chump Glutton, given the chance. Okay, that's a deal. Get to untap. Okay. Second plus Ashiok. I want to draw a Liliana, so we'll exile the Iron Crag. And then Liliana is a perfect answer to the Trespasser. Can plus once again. And make a pair of tokens. And your opponent has seen enough, can play Liliana, minus, and then plus make them discard. Could follow up with another Urza assembles the Titans, and then Drown also perfect to proliferate, haven't activated staff yet, which can uh, give us even more tools to work with. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. We've got our early removal. Staff can ramp out Urza Assembles on turn 4 up against Red Aggro, so this will be a true test. If we can survive a Red Aggro, then uh, we've got a decent deck on our hands. Swiss Spear, good to drown next turn. But our opponent's off to a blazing start. Kumano, double Swiss Spear. 
can set up a turn 3 kill in some circumstances. Luckily we've got a bit of interaction here, and then there's no reason to proliferate. Probably go with Celestus over Staff so we don't pay life right away, but once we have an Ashok in play, Staff will be better. I wouldn't mind finding our uh, Sweeper here, killing all one drops. Another Kumano. We're down to 10, and there's Path of Peril. Ask and you shall receive. Yeah, that might be better than doing anything else here. Drowning a single creature, playing Celestus, even though it could set up my 5 drop. This is more likely to keep me alive. Even though we know another creature is incoming. And then if we can find a land here, that would be awesome. Letting me play Celestus plus Drown. We're still definitely on the back foot. Lightning Strike puts us to 5. Found a land, but it's tapped. Well, in that case, go with tap land and drown. I don't think I can afford to take two from Epicure. When we're gonna take two from Kumano. So we're dead to another lightning strike. Chandra puts me to two life here. This little candle's gonna set your world on fire. Problem is, we're pretty far from turning the corner and gaining a life. Give a toast. <laughs> I'd love to. And no fifth land, sadly. So that leaves me dead. Don't have the mana to animate Fortress to gain life back. Yeah, just a little bit short here. But it was a brutal opening for Monored, admittedly. And we were on the draw as well, which can make a pretty big difference. But yeah, this is a matchup I would expect to lose more often than not. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. I think we've got a keeper, even though it could be a little slow in some aggro matchups. Staff to cast a turn four assembles. Could even put in play our Eternal Wonder right away opponent on likely a domain strategy. So their late game is quite powerful as well. They could have Leyline Binding for interaction. Could also be the Invasion of Alara combo deck. The fact that they had to play Mirix on 3 implies that they don't have a lot of other lands in hand, which is good for us. In case they have Leyline Binding, I think I prefer them getting rid of Celestus instead of Staff, since Staff proliferating is quite nice with our Saga. And there's a Binding. Okay, that happens. So no turn 4 assembles into Eternal Wonder. Although would likely start from Chapter 1 to dig towards another Planeswalker. This looks like a herd migration, yep, getting a basic land. They don't have island yet, so that's what they searched up. And Iron Crag we can still play here, so we'll start with Iron Crag and then play Staff. So we don't lose life for no reason. And then I could use this to draw as well. In this matchup that's certainly acceptable since our opponent's not pressuring our life total. Uh, land, and another one. So we'll start from chapter 1. See if we can find an Ashiok. Opponent countering with a Mirror Shell Crab. Okay, fair enough. That happens. Try again next turn. At least we don't have to worry about Invasion of Alara yet because of Mirex. And they seem to be missing a land drop, so I'll draw another card. Another staff and a cut down. Okay, so if I play Urza Symbols after playing my lands, I can pay for another crab. Uh, 
And I think I still start from chapter one. I need a second planeswalker for this to be more effective. And we found Ashiok. Can draw Wandering Emperor. Do I want to land afterwards? Not really. So this looks good. And then I could play another staff. And if this gets countered, I don't mind. And then I could still proliferate here to put in my Eternal Wanderer. Hoping they don't remove my Saga. And then wait to play Ashok next turn in case they are holding another Leyline Binding for my Planeswalker. This can make a Samurai. So we can start applying a bit of pressure. And then next turn Ashok with double staff in play. Could technically already ultimate. Virtue kills my token. And alliance. So next turn we could potentially see Invasion of Alara. Opponent contemplating going face now. Still goes after my Planeswalker. Okay, so what to do next? Can play Ashiok and then start by drawing. See if I can maybe hit my land drop for the turn. And make your fear known to me. No land drop, just another staff. So I can activate Ashiok a second time. First, we probably want to play another staff. Paying two life will exile my top two cards. Then I can activate this twice, make a bunch of samurai. I brought backup. Show them the edge of your blade. And then with one of those stabs I want to proliferate. And see how many cards we exile here. So total mana values of exiled cards is 15, so that's not enough to win the game right now. So in that case, I don't think I'm planning to minus 7 right now. So let's just draw with the author staff. And another staff, 31 cards left. And then Ashok can just uh, plus 1. Play a land and pass. So now 20 is the total mana value. Could have also made some nightmares and then grow them with uh, proliferate from staff afterwards. But uh, opponent just passes. No need to cut down the token. And a Vraska was awesome. Okay, so step one play Vraska. Vraska wants to probably plus. How likely are we to mill the opponent out here with an Ashok ultimate with triple staff activation? Seems somewhat feasible. So we'll draw and proliferate. And then I could just uh, draw a card, exile four more cards. Could have also won with a Vraska ultimate this turn, potentially. Draw again. And then now we're at 42. Can exile four more cards, or I can play another staff. And then that will pay two life. And then I can uh, draw another card here. And then now we should have enough. To minus 7, target the opponent. And mill 64 cards. Can have a quick peek at their deck out of curiosity. So they were indeed on the Invasion of Alara build. But yeah, I keep recommending people not to play Mirex and people keep putting it in their decks. They might have been able to combo off otherwise. So yeah, being able to win with Ashok Ultimate is pretty satisfying. Quadruple staff and play. 
But as I've said, I could have also gone with Vraska, proliferate with Staff, and then uh, try to poison the opponent to death instead. So having both the alternate win condition of milling as well as poison is pretty fun. And we can also just win with damage with our creature tokens. So we've got all three win conditions included onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not great. Missing early interaction and mana acceleration. No double black for Liliana either. If we draw a black source, then this might actually be great on the play. Getting to play a Liliana into Emperor is pretty strong. I'll keep it. I'll give it a shot. Even our Staff of Completion or Celestus would help. So we've got a lot of outs. And who can resist a curve of Planeswalkers? from 3 all the way to 6. Our opponent's on a poison deck, oh no. So this is bad news. And it looks like the very fast poison version with lots of 1-drops. Necrogen Communion. So that's 3 poison applied, at least we found our black source. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll Liliana minus, even though opponent gets to make a bunch of 1-1s one afterwards. What if I wait to exile this with Wandering Emperor? Is that better? I guess, yeah, exiling it would prevent us from triggering. So, change of plan, plus Liliana. And then next turn Wandering Emperor. I don't think this is going to be a matchup for Ashiok. But at least Urza Assembles putting in play Eternal Wanderer could help close out the game a bit faster. Opponent discards Skrelv. Another Crawling Chorus. And another Communion. Okay. Opponent's going face. This is definitely happening. And I want to play around a protection spell. Have to sequence it this way. Otherwise I could have sacrificed the uh, tapped creature. And then finding an untapped land for Urza Assembles could also help, letting me play Eternal Wanderer. But we're at 8 poison. Liliana's minus 2, not that great against the Crawling Chorus. Contaminator. Okay, that one we can drown. We found a land as well. So now I'm kind of lacking Urza Assembles. Could even start from Chapter 3, immediately activate both of my Planeswalkers twice. But probably makes more sense to put in Eternal Wanderer. Which can then... Leave them with essentially a 1-1 one, one token. I guess they'll also get a second 1-1 one, one token from uh, Crawling Chorus dying. So I could instead just leave them with a Crawling Chorus. And then plus Liliana instead of minusing. And this can make a Samurai. Now they can attack into it with a seed core, but I still like plussing here. Opponent had a drown in hand, so would have been pretty effective. Oh no, Annex Sentry. That's bad. So now they clear my token, can finish off Eternal Wanderer. Opponent still going for the poison, so now we're dead to proliferate, but I do get to activate my Planeswalkers twice. Liliana minus, not that helpful, but I can plus, and then plus again. <laughs> Meantime, we all have we'd this can make a pair of tokens, Show them the edge of your and then maybe work towards a Liliana ultimate. Okay. Don't overthink things. Let's see if our opponent can proliferate for the win. 2-2 two, two Double Strike still beats plus 2 plus 1 on the Crawling Chorus. So they don't actually have any good attacks. Oh, 
Yeah, I think they should have taken out Eternal Wonder last turn. Even though now they are in a position to win with another Drown. So if I find instant speed removal, I could also hold it to kill my own creature in response to Fizzle the Proliferate. Eternal Wanderer can get rid of the token from Crawling Chorus using the plus one ability. And then we can maybe get an attack in with a Restless Fortress as well. Opponent activates Seed Core, but it's not gonna do much here. So, a bit of an ambitious attack. Take my turn. Path of Peril doesn't seem necessary. So, plus Liliana. And then make a Samurai versus get rid of the token. Probably just get rid of the token for now so we can start attacking. Alright, try and close out the game as quickly as possible. Next turn I could ultimate Liliana. And our opponent just has a land here, so could ultimate Liliana, but they would still be left with black mana to cast a Drown. But I guess with our opponent at 8, we can just attack for the win here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. If we can hit a land drop or two... We should be good to go. Celestus can discard another Celestus. So don't mind drawing multiples. Okay. Opponent probably on a domain strategy. So at least they're not going to apply a lot of meaningful pressure early. We'll see if they have a Leyline Binding. Alright, so far so good. Discard Celestus. And then we'll start from chapter 1, since I would like another Planeswalker. Put maybe discarding a herd migration here. No Planeswalker. Don't think I want any of these. So bottom everything, hope for the best. Just a line on top. Alright, point's got the binding. Going after... Yeah, they're unsure, still going for our saga. And a flash quarters next, so our point's on the invasion of Alara build, basically. Okay, so could take out flash quarter, but then I wouldn't be able to play Ashiok. So I think I like Ashiok and then just plus and then next turn deal with Flesh Gorger. And then I'll exile Caves, draw Iron Crag. And we'll see if they have the invasion here. Just an attack for three. And a herd migration, okay. So they might have been missing the fifth land. So probably means we'll see invasion next turn. And maybe another flesh gorger here. Or a bramble familiar. Okay, path of peril. I can cleave and destroy all the opponent's creatures. Question is whether I want to make some tokens. Now, of course, if our opponent does have a cemetery desecrator next turn, they could finish off Ashok, so maybe a reason to make some tokens while we can. If I virtue the Flesh Gorger, make tokens, then they will grow since I put something in exile and then I can drown second main. That's not bad either, and then I can save my Path of Peril. So yeah, go Iron Crag. Virtue, killing Flesh Gorger. Sadly, exiled Kaya, which could have been nice. Then we'll make tokens. They'll pick up the counters. Go to second main phase. And then now drown familiar. And proliferate. Okay. So now we've got a bit of pressure going. And I can cast my Virtue of Persistence at the very least. 
All right, it's going to be a Desecrator. So that's going to take care of Ashiok. Staff of Completion would be nice with Ashiok still in play, but uh, that could let me proliferate. Or we can just cast our Virtue of Persistence now, pass, and then start getting back Flash Gorgers, which the opponent did not exile. Possible they have their own Virtue that they want to cast, but we'll get a head start. Yep, Virtue kills a Nightmare. And a Bramble Familiar, opponent not trying to cast a 7 mana adventure is interesting. Maybe they have another one in hand. Or they just want to get to uh, 7 mana for Virtue of Persistence. Either way, we got our Flesh Gorger. Next up, we could attack with a Nightmare. Staff probably wants to draw at this point instead of proliferating. Finds our Emperor, so that can exile Desecrator, so it doesn't trigger. So that's perfect. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. An attack. What you get for Having grown the nightmare as well. Probably fine to play the land, even though I could keep it to maybe discard to the Celestus. Okay, Pwn plays their own virtue. So, yeah, we don't have any creatures, our opponent only has a one left. And that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is acceptable. Could use a bit of mana acceleration. At least we've got the early removal. And then Urza assembles pretty nice alongside Ashok. Opponent with double headquarters. Now a swamp, so some sort of five color deck. And uh, we know what that means. Kill familiar. Opponent uses herd migration. So next turn we could see an invasion of Alara. Oh, we only drew land so far. Opponent's got nothing, so maybe holding a bunch of removal. So I'll start from chapter 1. Could see Leyline Binding to exile it, but at least it will have provided a bit of card advantage. And uh, yeah, those are a lot of Planeswalkers. So Vraska, I can reveal and then draw Wandering Emperor, don't need lanes. Could also draw Wandering Emperor and then keep Vraska a surprise. Sure. That way they maybe won't prioritize removing my Saga. Okay. So we'll put in Vraska. And then I could start by proliferating, but I really want to play Ashok first. So opponent does have a window to Leyline Binding my Vraska. Okay, so now we'll proliferate and draw which will let me proliferate the Saga. Alright, point hand, the Leyline Binding. Probably goes for Vraska now. Nope, still goes for Ashok, so I'm regretting not uh, keeping the other one. Yeah, I guess we'll just proliferate now, and then I get to use Vraska again. And maybe set up a Vraska ultimate. And then we don't lack proliferate effects to potentially close out the game. Go for Sorin now. Could have played it first, but wanted to see if we picked up something else useful. Plus. And pass a turn. Time for an invasion of Alara, I presume. Nope, just a Desecrator, although that's enough to knock 7 loyalty off my Planeswalker, sadly. So I wouldn't be seeing a Vraska ultimate. Well, at least I still have both Planeswalkers in play. 
So we'll start with Soren, see what we find. Ashok, gladly reveal that. So we can play Ashok. We'll be a mana short of playing Wandering Emperor afterwards. Don't really want a minus. Can hang on to Wandering Emperor to Exile Desecrator, which our opponent knows about. Casting 7 mana, Virtual Persistence, not that great. Could also cast it for 2 and then cut down Desecrator, but then it does get to trigger again, taking something out. Which is not ideal. So maybe I just have to wait on playing Ashok. Okay, Urza assembles. Don't mind if I do. So I think it's still pass a turn with Emperor available. And then play this next turn, putting in Ashok, and then I can proliferate the Saga, hopefully. Opponent knows about Wandering Emperor, so our opponent's going to reconsider the attack. And play another Desecrator. Well, that's unfortunate. So that's going to deal with, I imagine, Vraska. Soren Ultimate could still be pretty effective here. Now we can channel Abandon Mire to get back Vraska. Your day will come. And then I could play Emperor just to make a token if I'm planning to do some shenanigans with Urza Assembles next turn. Yeah, this is complicated. Need to manage double Desecrator. If I proliferate with Vraska, add another lore counter, then we could also use the minus two afterwards, turn one of the Desecrators into a treasure, but that's still not dealing with both of them. So it's a bit of a tricky spot. I guess what we could do is just take one out, hope they don't go after Vraska to try and set up the ultimate next turn. In the meantime, we can casually ultimate our Sorin to deal 13 and gain 13, so we can keep drawing cards with it. And make a Samurai. Opponent takes out our Wandering Emperor. Okay, so now one thing we could do is double block Desecrator with my tokens and then kill my own token just so Desecrator doesn't trigger. And then next turn try and win with Vraska. I guess they could also kill their own Desecrator if they have a Virtue of Persistence. But it seems worth a shot. Nope, opponent just casting it for 7 mana. Okay, so I could ultimate Vraska, and then any proliferate effect wins me the game. But we'll see if Ashok can find one of those first. Activate Sorin. Can we find proliferates? We can. Awesome. So, ultimate Vraska. Opponent's got 9 poison. And then drown the Desecrator for the 10th point. And that does it. Alright, it was a bit of a messy game. A lot of ways we could manage our Planeswalkers there. But uh, yeah, we got the Poison win. And add that to our Mill win and Damage wins. So we got all three win conditions in one video. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our Black-White Planeswalkers in action. And I could never really recommend this deck in a best of one meta dominated by mono red aggro, so it's not going to be the best choice to rank up in the ladder. 
but it's definitely one of the most fun decks I've played in recent memory, getting to do some ridiculous things with Urza Ensembles of the Titans, alongside Vraska, alongside Ashok, and you've got all those alternate win conditions that you can pull off, so this is definitely pretty high on the entertainment factor. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.